Hello, my fellow gamers. It's Jay Dreamer from State 685. I have a new video for forging, Lord Equipment, those, those hard to get little cores and casting drawings, um, just everything that I've learned so far about the Lord Equipment process, I'm just gonna give you an overview today. Real quick, it's been a while since I've done an update, so let me kind of run through where Jay Dreamer is. I've successfully got my C29 started. I've got my T10 Cavalry started, and it's been expensive. So I'll kind of just jump in that real quick and show you around, and then we'll get right back to the Lord equipment. Once you open Imperial Guards, really quick, it's similar to Lofty as far as the Lofty soldier technology. Um, this one is for footmen. This one is for Cav. This one is for archers. Next row, once you've completed that, um, it unlocks these options. So I went down cab first. Um, I did the stirrups, which is both the um, cab might and cab resistance. And once those two were completed, I was able to unlock the technology tree for getting to the uh, T10s. Um, but I had to complete one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven complete technology nodes in order to unlock the Imperial Knights. Once you unlock them, then you have several other technologies that increase their capability getting down to here, which is the unlocking the cab skills. So the entire tree needs to be completed in order for you to get maximum T10 with cab skill troops. The other one is, um, I've got my C29 kicking. It's underway. I, I believe it started out with 60 days, 62 days, something like that, to, to actually get it through construction. I'm down to 44 days. But still, it's been, a, it's been a schlong trying to get this far. And that's where Jay Dreamer is. As far as the heroes go, um, I'm working on the Black Prince, Warhammer, and uh, Av um, Avalanche, trying to get them maxed out as fast as possible. I've also been working on my equipment, have a full blue set. Now I'm trying to get it up to purple. I chose to go that route to give me a little bit more benefit for my archer specific equipment versus just dragon gear. And I have been practicing and learning more about my dragon gear. So that's the video that will be coming up. So let's jump into the Lord equipment. And this is a screen that a lot of people have seen. So let me kind of explain it. Each one of these pieces of equipment are, they are linked to the minerals that you guys are gathering and you're gathering those minerals with the Fortress of Glory. So this little icon here takes you to the Fortress of Glory. When you first start out, you have to place it or build it onto the map. And you generally need to do that near a mine so you need to find your mine, you need to go to it, you need to place your fortress by building, clicking, and placing it as close as you can to the mineral that you want to gather. Now, <clears throat> there's a whole process of minerals, okay? So you have the lava, you have the emerald, you have the frost stone, and you have the Apollo stone. Each one of these minerals coordinate to the color of mine that you're gathering from. There are a couple things about gathering you need to know, what, which is this efficiency is linked to your population inside your castle. The load is linked to the upgrade capability of your uh, Fortress of Glory. And then from there, in the forge, you will have the ability to gather and forge equipment, which will make gathering different. So you need to understand what the forge is telling you through the minor mastery and the major mastery of making equipment. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But for right now, Fortress of Glory, understanding what materials you're gathering. Um, right now, each one of my teams are gathering about 72 units per trip, and it is at 120% capacity. So that is excellent 
Now, you also have a capacity for what your mind can hold. And this is the capacity. When it reaches that, you can't mine anymore. And that's why you have to forge. That's why you have to sell. That's why you have to buy. And I'll get into those now. So inside your castle, you have the alchemy workshop and you have the item exchange. Inside the item exchange is where you can go in at the mineral store and you can buy equipment. Now, when you click on it, it says you will buy a level five sword of thorns of random quality. So what it means by random, it could be white, green, blue, purple, uh, orange or gold. It's just random. There, there's no specific science to it. It's random. Um, the only thing that is controllable is how much material or minerals you gather and how much you're willing to spend for those random pieces of equipment. Now, inside the mineral store here, when you're buying these equipment, you're buying the thorns. This is all thorn gear. And the reason why it's all thorn gear is because in the forge, under the alchemy forge, you only make ominous gear here. Now, the difference between thorn gear and ominous gear is forging. That is the primary difference. And that forging at the highest level, level 10, gives you better equipment perks. If you would go into this section of the equipment that explains everything and you want to click the um, search icon, you can switch between the two levels, all right? And as you can see here, the ax gives you combat speed and it gives you up to 30, which is a better rating than if you were to go to the sword at level 10, which goes up to 18. Using the thorn gear, only get you so high to get higher in your buffs. You have to forge equipment and the highest buffs is the ominous level 10 equipment. And it is still a little random because when you go into the uh, forge and you go to um, forge your ominous equipment, you know, if you're going to be forging your, um, your ax, it's still random. There's no way of controlling exactly what the outcome is. Now, this section here, which is your mastery, it, it, is, it is very difficult to understand, but there's a very good video by Black Rad that explains the forgery mastery process. I would highly recommend you check that out. Once you get forging and you get past this first level of 50 forges to unlock your mastery, then you have to have a very good plan on how you're forging to make sure you maximize without losses or delays. Okay, let's take a little bit deeper dive into the Lord gear. I have this chart infographic that I've created. The ultimate goal is to get your level 10 ominous gear. The ominous axe has combat speed. The amulet has damage. The Armor has HP, and the um, Coven has uh, Marching Speed. And these are the ones that, uh, that you're ultimately forging for. When you start out and you're doing your mining, there are a couple important things to understand. So you gather minerals to purchase level 5 equipment of random quality, and that's from a mineral store. The trade house is where you buy or sell equipment using royal coins. You can buy materials such as the casting drawings and the casting cores. Then in the depot, you're splitting equipment. And um, basically, this is where you're splitting any equipment that you've gathered so far. You're going to get some purples. You're going to get some blues. You're going to get some greens. You're going to get some whites. And you can split them. And when you split them, you have the chance to get cores back but it's random. You either split to get your cores and, and that's your casting cores or you use the trade house to buy your casting cores. When you split, when you split thorn gear, you get the blue um, casting core, which is a level five casting core. When you split ominous, you get the purple. 
there are a couple other casting drawings available. And they, uh, if you go into the forging process and you click this little um, circular uh, arrows, it shows you you have the ability to switch to your orange casting drawings or your gold casting drawings. But those seem to have only come from the White Crow event. So I haven't even got them yet, so I can't really speak to it. But I know that's kind of where it puts you to find. Now, as far as forging goes, this is where it all comes together. Um, depending on which you, if you're going after combat speed, you're going to want to be focused on the sword and axe. If you're going after damage, you're going to be focused on the amulet. If you're going after HP, you're going to be focused on armor. If you're going after marching speed, you're going to be focused on the, the covenant. Each one is associated to its color scheme. So red is the lava and it is primarily for um, the axe and sword. Uh, blue is for the amulet. Uh, green is for the armor, and yellow is for the um, covenant. Uh, these are the same symbols, um, so it's easy to kind of correlate. These are the level 5 castings. These are the level 10 castings before you go into the orange and gold castings. Now, in the forge system, uh, level 5 is where you start at. Ominous is the only thing it can forge and you have the four different types of equipment that you're going to forge and it requires minerals it requires casting and it requires drawing cores um, the basic principle that i follow lord equipment is gather forge split sell and buy so let's jump into that with greater detail okay for gathering we're going to focus on killing the sinister miners and the woodards um, both will give you materials or minerals and both have the uh, casting drawing reward. Um, so you can get 10 Sinister Miners a day, and you can get Woodards. The first one for the day gives you the bonus. They have to be within the 100, uh, 100 kilometer range of your castle. Um, recommended power is 3 million or more to win. It's odd because even though I've done these rewards, I don't see casting drawings every time. Um, it's weird. So there, there, there has to be a randomness to it, obviously, because I've killed several Woodards within that, that six that I've killed that didn't yield me any castings or any chests. So there's a randomness to it. Um, most times you do get equipment, but not every time. The mine is where you're consistently gathering minerals. Right now, I'm gathering blue. Um, so depending on what type of equipment you're going for, you would want to gather that type of mineral, especially once you open up your mastery. Then it's you're gathering sp specific types of minerals based upon that mastery. So like I said, refer back to Black Rad video. It's very, very helpful on that. Let's just go check out the forge. I have 412K green and I have 430k the blue so I can forge either one of those equipments and right now because I haven't opened up my mastery it doesn't matter what matters is do you have enough material do you have enough castings and do you have enough cores going from there you go into your splitting splitting is taking the equipment that you've received splitting it so you can get a chance for more cores so if I take all of these, um, they are all standard thorn equipment. The chance of me getting a core is a blue core, and it kicks me back all these resources. I'm looking at splitting. I have eight of them selected. They are all green, and I'm going to go ahead and split. So I got one casting core, and the rest were minerals. The uh, trade house I can sell my lord equipment. I could sell my drawings for my castings, or I can sell my cores or mineral materials. Buying and selling is a great way for you to use your farms, have them sell minerals to you and have them sell cores and drawings to you. In the um, selling aspect, you have shelves. You get one shelf to begin and then every shelf that you want to open after that is 200 gold coins. Now you can obviously sell any type of equipment for buying equipment. You have this filter where you can select the type of equipment, the level you're looking for, 
if it's thorns are ominous and the color so let's say you're looking for purple gear the gear will be listed depending on how you have it sorted so if you want lowest price to highest highest price to lowest um by its rating etc is in this filter so you can choose what you're looking for and sort it and be able to buy the gear you need you can also buy drawings you can buy materials now in materials if you go down here and click the cores it shows you what casting cores are available and this is a good spot to be able to get casting cores when you're low and can't win them through uh, splitting so I have about two hours left for my miners to keep gathering um, I'm here in my minerals real quick shortcut to the mineral stores this icon here and this is where you have to weigh your mineral usage all right so I could buy this gear and hopefully it randomly gives me the best gold uh, version of gear I've ever had or we go and take a quick look at what the forge might give us so balancing where you spend your minerals now because of the forging mastery lock process you have to forge so many times um, might as well forge to get equipment when you have minerals as long as you have the casting the drawings um, and the cores go for it now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the green first and you can do mass forge and I think it's up to 10 items at a time all right so I got a blue and I got a green so good pieces of equipment that I don't need because I already have better equipment and I can now go over to my blue and do the same here. Ooh, what is that? That is a purple and that is a blue. So purple is a good rating and if I didn't have golds and oranges already, purple would be nice. Um, if we look at it, the uh, this is damage increase of 1.6. Not bad. If you're starting out, that's a great random pick. Now, if we go to my depot and we look at my equipment, obviously I've got lots of greens, some blues, some purples, and very few gold, very few orange. Um, if I click on this, this is a ring of thorns. And this one actually is a higher equipment rating because this is 19,000 in equipment rating. But I'm looking at this marching speed increase by four per four point five percent versus three point five percent. So I'm choosing to go with the lower rating equipment for a higher base attribute. Now this has also got an HP increase on it, which is three point two percent, where this one doesn't have an HP increase. So I'm choosing to hold out, and hopefully I will forge a better piece of equipment that will replace this lower attribute one, but that's where I'm at with those. So now with all this equipment, I can either buy it, I'm sorry, I can either sell this equipment for gold coins or I can split it. Now, if I wanted to split it, let's go and split, um, I'm gonna split just, actually, let's just try one at, one at a time and see what my random chance is. Each type of equipment gives a specific mineral. So I can keep splitting one at a time or I can increase my chance probability by splitting more at a time. So out of those four, I got one core. Now, if I were to switch over and go with the ominous armor, it's going to give me a different level casting core. Being able to get my forge up to 50 times so that's all level five casting cores that i need so i have eight selected let's see what the chance is so i got three cores on that these higher level pieces of equipment i've tried selling them a few times and no one's buying them now the thing that you don't see is you don't see their ratings so if you have one that you're holding you want to make sure you don't select it split it some ominous and some blue and green. So I got one core of each and I got materials back. Plus I now have three greens. So this is where I would go and sell those greens. I have a sword. You can see right here that the Lord out there selling a 148 rating for 32 gold coins. I'm going to leave mine at 40 gold coins. 
and I've released it. And when it's on the shelf, basically it's immediately out there for purchase. The higher rated equipment will not go immediately to the shelf when you release it. It will go into a display period. And once that display period ends, then it will be available for purchase. All right, that's just to kind of show more lords that it's available. Um, you can also, once it's on the shelf, if you want to bring it back, you just remove it from the shelf and it's no longer for sale. Now, when you're buying equipment, you have to have gold coins, so you got to sell in order to attain the gold coins. And I don't like to sell for bottom dollar. I like to be around the 40 and 44 range, depending on the quality of the item I'm selling. Um, when it's whites or greens and uh, I like to buy low so if I'm going to buy equipment the reason why I'm buying equipment is because I want to try and split it for its core now if you don't want to take that chance and you just want to buy cores under material down here are the cores and cores are valuable so um, you don't get them for 30 gold coins so I can buy one right here for 187 gold coins. This is where I would work with my farm to sell cores at a much lower price point. Yes, I'm buying it. Comes out of the total, goes over into bag, and then from the forge, I can see my cores right here. Okay. Well, I believe that's a pretty thorough run through of the entire Lord system. And uh, like I said, Ominous gear level 10 is what you're trying to ultimately get to. Um, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll be able to see all the charts that I've created, including the new info, info chart. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out, let me know. Jay Dreamer, I'm out.